The Gospel of John 3.16. Shall we stand and rise for the reading of the Word of God? I thought so. More honor to the flag than to God and Jesus Christ. Idolatry. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The love of God, man, in his plain state, is a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. So, in the state that you are in right now, if you were to die in that state as a sinner, you cannot stand in the presence of a holy God, nor can you enter the abode of the holy God as a sinner. For God said in the scriptures, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And there are no means to erase the account of your sins that's being recorded by God. Of any means of a man for you to be right in the eyes of God. Because you cannot be a sinner and be righteous without the love of God. And the love of God is that he sent his only begotten son. And that son said, Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the only access for you to go to heaven and be with God is through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God who is God. There's no means of religion. There's no means of your works, not of works, lest any man should boast. For by grace are you saved through faith. You can walk all you want for a cause, but walking for whatever you're going to do is not going to get you to Jesus Christ. It's not going to get you to God. It's a form of a work. And works does not please God because the finished work of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again according to the scriptures, that is the means, that is the way that is God approved for salvation. We preach on the streets because the Bible says, go ye all the world and preach the gospel. We don't have an offering plate. We're not going to tell you about our church. We're not going to tell you about baptism. We're going to tell you about a name that there's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved, and that name is Jesus Christ. That is the name that we will bring to sinners. The name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. And you are a sinner. Why will you die? Because you are a sinner in the eyes of God, because your great, 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 great grandparents disobeyed the word of God. God said, do not eat of that fruit. And Eve said, yummy. Adam, here, here's dinner. He lunched on that fruit. The curses came upon man. And the reason why of death, because we do not believe what God said. And the Bible says, what must I do to be saved today? Jesus Christ, and you will not believe. Things have not changed from the garden. The very fact is, if you are not right with God right now, and you will not step up here right now and say, Preacher, what must I do to be right with God? You are right now in your sins. You are rebelling against the Word of God. Do you realize in the 1800s when a man would get up and preach like he was, the congregation, all the people in the city and the streets and the towns would step forward in tears with their heart bowed down to get right with God. George Whitfield would preach a mouth that would be heard a mile away by Benjamin Franklin. 
that Benjamin Franklin did not get right. And probably spend eternity away from God here in preaching. And you people stand in the same way. You hear week after week, you hear about God, you hear about Jesus, you hear about the gospel, and you will not step forth and get right with God. And if you die in your sins, you will be in hell forever. And there is a hell. I don't care what you believe. God, Jesus Christ, spoke more about it than anything else in his ministry. Just because you don't believe it, just because you mock it, God's not going to say, oh, okay, come here, little sinner, let me put you in my arms. God is not an American. He's a holy God. He cannot allow your sins. And the only way you can be absolved and erased of your sins if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. You cannot go to Mary. You cannot burn candles. You cannot slay blood of saints. You cannot pass off money. You cannot go to a particular church. You cannot get washed in water. Anything, all that stuff is works and not of works, least any man should boast. It's all upon the merit of the gospel of Jesus Christ that Jesus died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And was buried and arose again, according to the scriptures. You see, in our state, what we are, rebelling against the Word of God. That's what man is born into. He is born into sin. Sin came into him upon conception. There is no denying sin in our lives. And if you were to deny sin and say, Preacher, I am not a sinner. And people that will stand over your grave will look down and say, Liar. And without God, they look down and say, Liar, liar, your soul is on fire. Without God. You cannot go up to God the Father and say, look how good I am, God. When the Bible says there is none that doeth good, no, not one. And then God says, look on my right hand side and see who's there, Jesus Christ. Are you going to say you are better than Jesus Christ when you say, God, how good I am? Well, your good's not good enough because Jesus Christ is righteous. Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God. Righteousness is a lot higher than good. And your good will not be good enough to get to God into heaven. Jesus will say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But God, I never believed in you. And yet the Bible says twice in Psalms, verily, verily, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. In your atheism, the holy God says you are a fool. That's not wise. And as an atheist, you will stand before the God that you did not believe. Isn't that a kick in the pants? Liar, liar, you shall burn in fire. What's the lie? Oh, there's no God. Yes, there is. You know, not one place in the Bible of 66 books ever questions the identity, never questions the existence of God. It is taken that God is and God will be and God was. The Alpha and Omega. Now, your belief in the Big Bang. You have no evidence. 
You have no proof, no standing upon everything's here, upon nothing. That's what evolution says. Nothing, and here we are. Well, try paying your bills. Go into the bill place, pull out your wallet, and say, there's nothing in my wallet, and I watch $100 bills show up. It ain't going to work. It's like evolution did not work. We're not getting better and better. We're getting worse and worse. The school system that teaches evolution has to have cops with guns, has to have metal detectors. That was not in my day. And I was only in school 20 years ago, 30. 30 years ago, you can walk the hallways, you can go about, you can have a peanut butter jelly sandwich without being arrested. There was no metal detectors. Evolution is a lie. Look at your school. But God said that the Nicolaes going to abound, it's going to get worse and worse, and men are going to be lovers of themselves. Sodomy. And that's spoken by Paul to the churches. We've sinned and we're getting worse in our sins. And we stand before God as a sinner. And before God, you can't say, oh, a lie is worse than sodomy. And sodomy is worse than adultery. And adultery is worse. No, all have sinned. The Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. All sin is sin. And Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, can take away and wash away your sin with the blood of the Lamb. No blood of the Lamb, there's no washing. There's no cleansing. You will get into hell. You see, a person goes to hell not because he's a fornicator. That's sin. He goes to hell not because he's a thief. That's a sin. He doesn't go to hell because he's killed people and will get the death penalty. That's a sin. That's what we are. As much as that guy who has raped and killed people, you and your lies are worse than that guy according to the scriptures. When God sees a sinner, he sees a sinner. There's no degrees of sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You are a sinner. You have to do something with your sin. Get baptized. All right? Uh, baptism for salvation. Listen, is it salt water or is it fresh water? Is it a lake or is it a river? Is it faucet or is it fire hydrant? Is it ocean? Which water? If water can wash away your sins, which water? The Bible says nothing. The Bible doesn't say the water of God takes away the sin of the world. That doesn't, that's not in there. So your baptism for salvation is false. It's a lie. And you tell your preacher that through the Bible, I tell him that that baptism is a lie. The Ethiopian eunuch said, oh, what must I do to be baptized? And Philip says, no, 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 no. Acts chapter 8, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. And Philip said, okay, now you can be baptized. Oh, Jesus, and I'm, I'm not quoting completely. Jesus, when thou enter the kingdom, will you think upon me? Oh, Jesus. Wait a minute, stop the crucifixion. We got to get this guy down. We got to get him wet. That's not what happened. That dying thief never received anything of water. And Jesus said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Why? Because he believed that title that was above Jesus' head. King of kings, king of the Jews. 
Jesus. And believing upon the name and the work of Jesus, Jesus said to him, Today thou shalt be in paradise. Mary! Oh God, here's Mary! And Jesus there, smacking his head, No, 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 no. Mary was a sinner. Oh, no, she was born without the original sin. And then when you read in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, she brought a sin offering. Mary cannot do anything for you because as wonderful as a woman she was, and she was, she's a sinner. Oh, Lord, my pastor, my priest, they are so great. They are so wonderful. And they're so much a sinner like all of us. You see, you need sinless blood. And you're not going to find it in a man. But you will find it in the man. Christ Jesus. Before the Roman government, Jesus stood beaten, Isaiah 53, bleeding, Isaiah 53. And Pilate said to the people three times, four times, I find no fault in him. And yet the American school system from kindergarten all the way up to the upper grades, will try to find fault in that man that Pilate said, no, I find no fault. Herod, what do you have to say? I, I find nothing wrong with him. Can't find nothing. Judas, what do you have to say about Jesus? I have betrayed the innocent blood. And what's education say? He was a good teacher. He was a good man. Uh, it was never a Jesus. He was a prophet of God, but he was not God. And your soul is damned to hell on those beliefs. Because what I spoke about is against religion, because Jesus Christ, the virgin birth, was without the original sin himself. Jesus Christ, born of the tribe of Judah, who is God, and God is Him, suffered and died and bled that we may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish. In the eyes of God, have you ever lied? You broke the Ten Commandments. James says, not a physical quote, but James says, he that has offended in one point has offended in all. Thou shalt not bear false witness, you broke all ten. You're a sinner. <clears throat> Junior, did you steal a cookie? No, Mom, I didn't steal a cookie. And you stole the cookie. You're now a sinner, I don't care what age you are. And behold that your sin will find you out that you now have begun a column of sin as God adds up the lies, the stealing, the pornography, the cheating, the nonsense, the words of your mouth. Matthew speaks about Every idle word that you speak will come into judgment. 
Now let me add to that, if I may, with Bible Scripture. Not only the words that come out of the mouth, but the words that you think in your head. You will be found guilty of your thoughts. You will be found guilty of your actions. You will stand guilty before the Holy God without Jesus Christ. You cannot be made clean before God without Jesus. Now what is the sin, the sin, that puts a man into hell for all eternity? Rejecting Jesus Christ as his Savior. You cannot get to heaven without Jesus Christ. But you can get to hell without Him. And by believing upon Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will never go to hell. You will only go to heaven. You can't say that with religion. Listen up, vendors. You've heard the gospel. You have heard the word of God. You know what Jesus is. You know what the gospel is. You have heard heaven and hell. And you will stand before that holy God condemned. More than somebody who is, oh, what's what's the farmer's market in Daytona? Let's go take a visit to that place. And they walk out of here and they don't ever come back for whatever reason. Oh, that was interesting what that guy was doing. He was screaming, yelling. I don't know what he was doing. And yet you vendors know what I'm doing. You have testified to my face what I'm doing. And you are sick and tired of the same message as you have told me to my face. So you know what's being preached. And you sit there and scoff. You sit there and ridicule. You sit there and mock. And one day God's going to sit on his throne. And be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall reap. Imagine you standing before God one day. Oh, God, help me. <laughs> Proverbs 1. Oh, God, I didn't know he was speaking the truth. <laughs> oh, you're a silly, stupid human, isn't it? Oh, look how great you are. <laughs> as God will mock and ridicule you in sowing and reaping. Because every week you have heard the gospel and you've done nothing. You'll be in a shameful place before God. We are a generation most cursed. In the 1800s, people would come up to a street preacher and to the people that are with him. And the question on their lips would be, what must I do to be right? I forget the year, but Enfield, Connecticut, Jonathan Whitfield got before a pulpit and he spoke his outline. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. Jonathan Edwards. And that congregation, tears and hearts melted and bent to God, Jesus Christ, their Savior. America 2000s, whatever they call this century. 
The gospel is preached. Jesus Christ is exalted. And how much is that watermelon? How many strawberries do I get? Oh, that guy will shut up about quarter after 10. Hey, he's leaving. And but what you don't know and what you will not believe that what we're preaching is as actual fact. That God is holy and you are not. That God is righteous. You may be good. The Bible says there's none that do it good, but I'll give you some benefit now. There are good people. I don't know what standard you use by good. I would think that Adolf Hitler thought he was good, but what he was doing for the church, I don't know. A lot of these serial killers think they're good. I don't know. What measure is good? And when you say you're good, and then you walk up to me and say, Preacher, judge not, least ye be judged, you're judging yourself. Something that you're not. When the Bible says there is none that doeth good. So you're judging false judgment. While I stand here judging things. And one of the things that I'm judging is, have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? And if you have not, you are not saved. You are not saved. You are in danger of hell fire. I don't care what person told you otherwise. That person is a liar and it is a deceiver. To anything but Jesus Christ and you're okay. That's a deceiver. I stand at the main thought, idea, the revelation moment of the name Jesus. Let's look at what Jesus means. Well, let's look at it for a moment, if I may, forgive me. That moment you're doing something and it fails and you yell out Jesus Christ as a curse. I've done it before I was saved. You take the name of Jesus Christ as a curse. And let's look at Jesus. It means Jehovah saves. Christ, the anointed one. So you bang your knuckles on that metal. And you are crying out, Jehovah saves anointed. But you never hear Allah, damn it. Oh, Mary. Oh, no. And the Bible says in Romans 1 and Hebrews that in our heart is placed the knowledge by the Holy Spirit of God Almighty. No other gods. In the book of Isaiah, God says, I'm looking around. I don't see no other gods here. Angels, you see any gods? Look, at, look under there. Any God? No, I don't see no gods in Isaiah. And yet you have turned to other gods. You have turned to idolatry, which God, the jealous God, says I hate. Oh, that loving God hates things. And I stand here at the farmer's market. And in your idolatry of not coming to Jesus Christ, ones, fives, tens, and twenties, as you worship the dead images of presidents and Benjamin Franklin's, and not Jesus Christ. Oh, give me more of those dead presidents. And the consumers, yeah, give us more watermelon. Give us more bad strawberries, please. 
Ignore that guy out there. He's only here for so long. And yet the words I have will last longer. The words I have will be sweeter than what you ever have in these booths. The words I have upon Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone will give you a body one day that will have no more pain. The words that we speak will get you out of hell. Now man will say, go to hell. Read the back of my shirt. It says that we are here that you may not go to hell. Now isn't that love? And I'm not even charging you. This is all free. Salvation is free of God. Anyone may come to God through Jesus Christ and get saved today. Any one of you can get your name written down in the last book of life if you'll step forward. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. Step out. Come forth and meet Jesus Christ, the Savior. We've got a King James Bible, and we'll show you nothing but the Bible when it comes to salvation. You must be born again, the Bible says, and yet God's giving you the choice. You cannot look at God and say, Am I a good boy? Uh-oh. Here I go. God is not Santa Claus. There is no Santa Claus. But there is God the Father and Jesus Christ. You cannot sit on Jesus' lap and say, Oh, give me, give me, give me. But you can stand before God upon your knees. I said stand with your heart. Make a standing with your heart. To profess that Jesus Christ is the Savior. Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth. And I want Him to be my life. And the Bible records in the Gospel of Luke, all the angels in heaven will rejoice. The big deal is heaven is when a lost man comes to Jesus and gets saved. God don't care about the flag. He cares about His Son, Jesus Christ. All the people that stand up and pledge allegiance to a cloth, but will not pledge allegiance to Jesus Christ. Who do you think is going to be safe at judgment? The only safe way you've got is the one that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You better have the record and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is your faith. That is your leaning. That is your foundation to be safe. Because anything else is hell. Jesus Christ died for you because you can't do nothing. You are without hope. You are without God. You are most miserable without Jesus Christ. There is no hope without Jesus Christ. There is no love without Jesus Christ. There is 
is no joy without Jesus Christ. Oh, you may have a hoo-ha-ha. -ha. That's only temporary. That don't last. And you sure can't take that to hell with you. I'll tell you what I can do. In the blood of Jesus Christ in heaven. I can have fellowship with my wife for all eternity. She's saved just as much as I am. Now, I cannot tell you exact counts what's going to happen in heaven. I can't tell you that. But let me speculate. If I'm wrong, I'll plead the blood of Jesus Christ. And I think when we get to heaven one day, rapture or death, we're going to be like, hey, that was great, wonderful. Thank you, honey. Thank you for helping me serve Jesus Christ. And over here, I got my 15-year-old daughter who's saved and serving the Lord. And in glory. Now, it's, I believe this is a safe assumption. Now, I'm not going to get into bragging rights, but I believe there are people in heaven because of the work we're doing. Whether here, the missionary work, or other things we do. And in glory to have someone come up to us and wrap their arms around you and say, A holy forever thank you for your work. Because you took part of us being here. That is love, joy, and peace that will go with you through Jesus Christ in eternity. See, you can't pack your U-Haul and bring it with you to death. Your material things will stay here as you go off into eternity somewhere. But anything done for Jesus Christ will last forever and ever. And everything not done for Jesus, whether you're saved or you're lost, is going to burn. For the Christian, the judgment seat of Christ, wood, hay, or stubble. Okay, it's gone. We'll move on into eternity with Jesus Christ. But when you are cast off into hell, that's forever. And the hope that you have, which is hopeless, as the rich man that is in hell, oh, I can't say God. Uh, there's no God in hell. So, O.M., my family's coming here. O.M., my children are coming to hell. O.M., that's, that's what the rich man said. I've got five brethren. And that man in hell is pleading for preachers of the gospel to go to their families and say, Jesus saves. And you have heard the gospel. You have heard the words of the Bible. You have heard God speak to Jesus Christ. And you stand there like an ass. And you will not get right with God. And I'm telling you, the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. You better meet him with Jesus Christ and nothing but Jesus Christ. Because anything but Jesus, again, quote in the Bible, Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Jesus, I'm a Catholic, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Jesus, I'm a Baptist, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Imagine the one that suffered and died on that cross for you. Telling you 
the one that is the gospel, the way, the truth, and the life, telling you, go to hell. Go jump in the lake of fire. And you need not to. You have been told how to be saved. You've been told what the truth is. You have been told what the life is. You have been told what the way is. And Jesus Christ. The Jesus Christ that is the only begotten Son of God. The Jesus Christ that is God. The Jesus Christ that is virgin born of the tribe of Judah. You got to be forewarned because Paul tells us that there's another Jesus out there. They're a dime a dozen plus tax. We are speaking about eternal things. We're not speaking of that of right now. We are speaking about life after death. And there is life after death in the Bible. The life that's after death is either heaven or it's hell. There's no other. And to get to heaven's only by Jesus Christ. The way to hell is anything but Jesus. And a rest assured. By the United States Constitution of America, we have the right to stand here and preach Jesus Christ. Because Jesus saves. And no other. And you do not know when death will happen. If there's one thing a dead person leaves behind is a to-do list. A doctor's appointment card. I'll call you back later. Not many plan their death because they don't know when death is coming. And what death happens. That's it. You cannot wake up in the flames of hell and say, oh, i got to go back. You can't. You cannot wake up in the arms of Jesus and say, oh, let me go back and do more. You can't. Oh, Jesus, I believed on you. It's real. Let me go back and do what that guy's doing on the street corner. Nope, too late. You see, to the lost people, we stand here and say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And to you Christians that are not doing anything, stand up for Jesus and preach. And for those that are doing and serving the Lord, keep going. Keep at it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life because I have believed unto Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. You can too. You can have full assurance. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. I know. And you can know too. By the faith and belief of Jesus Christ, the Savior. You don't know, death may happen today. You may not see this afternoon. I don't know. 
But the long suffering of God, let me tell you what that is. And again, I'm not bragging on myself, okay? God said, get up this morning, get dressed, and go tell those sinners about Jesus. Uh, God, I, I'm really tired. I like to sleep. Get up. They're not going to get up and preach Jesus and show them my long suffering. We're coming upon a day, oh, oh what's it called? Oh, oh man, hold on. We're coming upon a special day this month. Uh, uh, Black Friday. Oh, no, that ain't it. Um, oh, what's that word? Come on, people, help me. What's the word that's coming up in November? Um, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And are you going to thank God that you've heard the way, the truth, and the light? I doubt not. You're going to be thankful that a bunch of people are going to kneel down to the Nazar Anthem and then throw a pigskin. And then the cook's going to say, here, here's the microwave. When it's done, serve yourself because I got to go shopping. And you don't think about thanking God. The fact is that we heard his gospel Saturday after Saturday after Saturday. We've heard a man faithful with the word of God preaching the word of God. And yet you want us to be gone. You want us to leave. You want us to shut up. You realize according to the Bible, you could get your wish right now. If Jesus comes for his church right now, we'll be gone. You'll never see us again. By three and a half years after that, you will not be applauding. The Lord could take us home. Yeah. So, 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 listen, we could die right now. We don't know. God's not saying, hey, I'll give you a longer life for preaching. No, he, he, no, we don't know. But what if God said, okay, I'm going to take you home. You know what the chances are of getting a faithful man to get back here and preach the gospel? The law of suffering God is go there and tell them. Because as you can look around, no one else is doing it. What is the love of God in the farmer's market of Daytona Beach? Go tell them about my son Jesus. Go tell them what they must do to be saved. Because they listen too much of that junk on the radio and TV. Give them a live preaching. Street preaching. About Jesus Christ. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. You know what's funny? Yeah, see, they're laughing. Um, the Bible says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Mark 16. I read the other day that scholars don't even believe... The, I, I think it's from Mark 12 to 16, even not further. Had I been a biblical scholar, I would not be here today telling you about Jesus because the Bible I believe in doesn't have going all the world and preach the gospel. And yet, 
In April 1987, the gospel was preached to me, and I received Christ as my Savior. 11-18-2017, Christ is being preached to you. And today is the day that you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Ask yourself a good question. If that man is right, I'm going to die. Where will I go and how and why? What will be the means of my death? And what foundation do I have for the belief that I do in death? Death will happen. And before you die, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. He that has the Son has everlasting life. But he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. You see, the love of God is Jesus Christ. The wrath of God is because you will not believe on Him. The love of God is Jesus Christ. And the wrath of God is not believing on Jesus Christ. You want the love of God? Receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. But without Jesus Christ, you're not getting no love. And if a preacher says God loves the sinner and hates the sin, that man is that man is lying to you. Because when you read John 3:16, that love is past tense. That love. See my little fishy. The love of God was shown about 33 A.D., thereabouts. The love of God was shown upon a cross. Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. That's the love of God. And He was buried. That's the will of man. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the will of God. And that's the finished work of God. There is salvation in no other but Jesus Christ.